Hey everybody, this is John Fusco, and you're listening to the No Film School Podcast. You may know Steve Ellison better by his beat-making alias, Flying Lotus. Or perhaps, even as Flying Lotus's MC alias, Captain Murphy. Music, however, was not his first love. The director, who now simply goes by Steve, actually went to film school far before he laid down his first mixtape. Just don't call him a product of the cinematic education system. His debut feature, Kuso, truly goes against every single rule his teachers may have taught him back in his days as a student. In fact, Steve says he had to consciously take some time off to unlearn film school, where he believes things were taught to be done in a certain, almost factory-like way. He is staunchly under the impression that if you limit yourself to what you learn there, you may miss out on crucial organic discoveries. Instead, Kuso plays out more like his music, freeform, chaotic, jazz-like. It is comprised of four horrifying shorts, woven together but separated by a series of animated hip-hop freakouts that, when put together, form some sort of grotesque psychedelic tapestry. After missing out on an interview when his film premiered earlier at Sundance due to horrendous weather conditions, I finally got the chance to sit down with Steve and talk about what scares him about being a filmmaker, erasing all self-doubt, and jumping into your first project with a punk rock, let's do this attitude. Kuso premieres via Shutter, July 21st. Check, check. Hey guys, it's John Fusco. I'm here with Steve Ellison, aka Flying Lotus. Steve, do you want to introduce yourself? Hey, I'm Steve. <laughs> What's up? And uh, we were just talking a little bit before we started this recording about yeah. how, uh, you know, we're no film school. Yeah. You went to film school. I did, yeah. You are. Bit, yeah. Would you call yourself a product of film school, though, or...? I actually wouldn't, man, because uh, I feel like after I was uh, after film school, I uh, I felt like I was like definitely like a product of that, and I wasn't happy with it anymore. Like I was, I felt like I had more ideas before I went there, and then I I felt like I learned that m- my reasoning was w- wrong. You know, like. You know, like they were—they really did make it seem like you couldn't do things because it was cool, just because you thought it was cool. It's not good. That's not good. It's not good enough to do something, it's just because you think it's cool. And I—I I think I, I really internalized a lot of things that they told me like that, and maybe took it the wrong way or whatever. But I think that I—I I took a lot of things from that experience as like the Bible and how it has to be. You know, and it I t- it took me years to unlearn that shit, you know, and the reason why, like, you know, all the films that you see are the reason why they're all the, like like the same now is because there people have these uh, ideas that it has to be a certain way, and it has to be done a certain way. You have to have like the treatment and the outline and the scene cards and all this shit, and it doesn't have to be like that. It doesn't. You know, I made Kuso in a very free form kind of way, like how I make my music. And that was a something that I had to learn. Um, and I, I, I was really inspired by a friend of mine who, uh, who made makes films and music. He Like Quentin Dupier, he did Rubber and Wrong and oh, Wrong yeah. Cops yeah. and all that stuff. And he does amazing music as Mr. Wazo. And I've been a huge fan of uh, both sides of him. Um, and he told me he was like, you know, make music like you make, or make movies like you make your music. And it took me a while to figure that out. And uh, but I get it now, you know, it because it, when I make music, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Mm-hmm. I just sit in the chair and then I start experimenting, tinkering, and then things start to happen. The wheels start to turn. This makes sense. And then here we are, you know. And sometimes I have an idea, but it's a very rare thing. You know? So then, how does that translate to film when so you're like writing? Writing. Writing, yeah. Gotcha. It's like, I don't know where we're going. I don't need to know where we're going. You just need to start writing and let it be. And and also, too, like not waiting too long to make these things. You know, not talking yourself, psyching yourself out of it. Like, you can find a million reasons not to pursue your idea. Mm. You know, you could you could sit around and, like, talk yourself into a hole about how you're not prepared, how you don't know the characters, whatever, this, that, whatever. You could do all that all day. You know, and I don't have a shot list. I don't have this. I don't have that. I can't without this. That's bullshit. It's, and it's like we can talk ourselves and think ourselves to 
you know, to the the bottomless pit of self doubt, man. You mm-hmm. know, and it's a really dangerous thing that I uh, I spent way too long doing with films, and and now I'm I'm really excited about you know to ha- just keeping going with the uh, with the projects and stuff. So earlier you said um, that film school kind of was telling you to do things that aren't necessarily what you thought are cool. What did film school try to uh, instill in you? I think film school, more than anything, tried to give you an honest... Well, the school I went to, LA Film School, I think they tried as best as they could to give you honest and uh, experience of what the film industry is like in trying to make a film and all that stuff. I think they really did their best to do that, and they really did come at you in a way like, well, if you know your ideas you know, this is why these movies work. This is why they're classics. And if you want to be in Hollywood, you're going to have to work in these ways to make these things, you know. They they didn't have, like, you know, experimental filmmaking at L.A. Film School. Maybe they do now, but, like, that wasn't the thing then, you know. So, and I didn't, I didn't know if I'm, I didn't know I was an experimental filmmaker. I didn't know what my thing was, but I know I didn't want to make, I didn't. I didn't want to make Jurassic Park. I don't want to do that. I I enjoy that movie, but that's not what I'm here to say. Um, so it's it's a tough thing, and I think it's, it might be a tough place to be for a kid who's you know on the outskirts of you know, and like the the kid who lives in his sketchbook and all that stuff. The kid who's like building his own worlds and universes and stuff. It's harder for those people, but at the same time, you should also know that you know you can make these things you can build it on your own you don't need you don't need a a a billion dollars or you know you don't have to have it all worked out you can figure it out in the making right sometimes that's the fun you know that that is the fun part so then in your own experience trying to get Cuso made yeah how would you say that differed from you know what they were trying to how they were trying to tell you to make a movie like what was your own yeah um well, there was a lot of things. I think mostly in just the preparation for it. I think, you know, preparing to make Cuso was a bit more against the grain. You know, um, I said I didn't workshop anything or, I guess, like flesh out, you know, scene cards and all that shit. I didn't do all that kind of stuff that they want you to do in school. I didn't, uh, you know, I think for... I did show up with storyboards and I did have the scripts written and all that stuff. There was a bit of it, but it was, I think it was just like a, I had more of a like be open to the moment approach to it when I could be, you know, like there's certain things you have to prepare for with like prosthetics and there's certain things like practical effects, whatever you have to know what you're doing. You have to know all that stuff. But I, um, I had to learn to just be okay with like, you know what, in the moment, I might feel different. And that was something that I think they don't want you to think about in film school. They want you to be ready. They want you to be like, they don't want you to be in that moment where you're like clueless or whatever. But I think I thrive in that space a little bit. You know, I'm like, shit, I don't know where we're going, but we can figure it out because we're a team, we're a crew, you know, I, I and that, that's the fun part of filmmaking. And I think if you like just stick to the storyboard shot list thing, or whatever, and I might miss out on some really organic shit. Yeah. A lot of the times, you know, you make the most exciting creative decisions when you're in a place of discomfort, um, mm-hmm. which is something that I've come to understand myself. But um, mm. my question for you now, based off of that, is you made a pretty uncomfortable movie for Mm. audiences to watch Mm, mm -hmm, so mm. was there any sort of like uh this is a question i also ask myself because i'm I'm interested in making my audience uncomfortable Mm. what's the value of doing that (laughs) there's two things right there's two things because first off you get to explore your own personal anxieties one you know um but man nothing can uh Nothing can make up for the look on someone's face. <laughs> you know, like, I hate to say it. Sometimes that shit is just so fun for me, you know, just to, like, just look at somebody, you know, like, when they're watching something that, you know, it, it, 
it's for that moment too you know there's i guess there's a lot of things um but at the same time you know like the shittiest part about this having you know this movie uh, for me this process of the movie is like it's like there's so much more than gross things in my movie and that's all people talk about because you know it's just you know i guess it there's a lot of there's it a lot of yeah, 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 yeah <laughs> fine that's fair but you know it, it's just i just wish that uh that there was like we could talk about other stuff. You know? <laughs> what do you want? What do you want to talk? No, about? it's fine. It's fine. No, it's no, fine. I, no. I want to talk about whatever you're curious about. But I, I did. Uh, yeah, I think that's just what, that's the nature of the beast, right? It's yeah, the, yeah. The blessing and curse of the, of the shit is like, you know, I didn't hear about too many pe- uh, movies out of Sundance, but they talked about mine because it was the quote unquote grossest movie of all time. You know, it was it's amazing to have that quote, but it's been like a it's been hanging over my the narrative of my film right you know so and it's not the gross film of all time i it it all depends on your your uh reference point and what you think is gross right you know so it's uh there's so many parts of the of of the film that have so much artistry it's like i want to i wish we could like you know i want to talk about that stuff too you let's know? talk about it though sure, let's, yeah, let's sure. talk about the structure of the film itself because sure. you know it started as one short right yeah and then you expanded it into four shorts yeah. and it's something that i've never really seen before in the sense that you split the four shorts up so that they were sort of like bouncing off one another and yeah. they weren't sequential so it wasn't like one short and then one short and then yeah. one short it was here's this part of the short and then we're gonna do like a musical interlude and then we're going to do the next part of this other short. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's kind of like a collage in that sense. Yeah. And a tapestry. It, yeah, a tapestry. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, and, and more than just, uh, you know, video. It was also, it film, seemed, yeah. yeah film, film, 35, like, 16, mm-hmm. 8 millimeter, all, all the fucking formats, except <laughs> IMAX, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, also let's talk about the production design um, sure. What was your collaboration like there? Because those were some crazy sets to sort of match the mood of the piece. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's let's talk yeah, about yeah. that first. The, uh, the production design was was a lot of fun because uh, you know I was really getting into Photoshop and uh, you know the production. Uh, I also mean like the the design of like some of the costumes mm-hmm. and aliens and stuff. I was really into Photoshop and like you know designing stuff, and so it was a lot of fun to just you know make the weird hats and like the the kids classroom suits and stuff like that just like the little details you know yeah. um i had so much fun doing that stuff so was that all you who were who not was all kind of it but i i definitely came up with a good chunk of you know those ideas mm-hmm. uh but uh you know i had a lot of help too you know like there's people like paul rice he's like a he's like a fucking brilliant motherfucker man and calder calder greenwood he's like he can make miniatures and stuff like we there's a moment in the beginning sequence where there's like a bit where the the guy rapping doing the yeah. the, the jazz rap yeah. shit he like he's like driving along this road and there's like a a miniature set behind him and stuff mm-hmm. we built that shit you know it was like on a turntable you know it was like it's really cool stuff how we did that man and like you know guys like him were just so brilliant and clutch in the moment like were able to make you know, I needed I needed a that microphone to drop down for him and in, in the shit. So he made that microphone out of a cardboard box and like some gaffer tape, man, like and spray painted it silver. And then there was a microphone. And I was like, and that was like I asked, I needed like five minutes. Yeah, dude. I was <laughs> like, gonna say, was that you have one of those in your bag? And like, no, <laughs> but I can make one really fast. Like, all right, sweet. You know, it was like little things like that were just like so clutch, man. It's so interesting just because, you know, you were talking about how we were just talking about how like a lack of not a lack of preparedness, but sort of a willingness to go in and find those moments can sure. result in shit like that. You yeah. Know? Yeah, absolutely. I don't think anyone will ever notice that thing is a cardboard box or whatever, but it's like that's a fucking cardboard box <laughs> microphone he's holding in his hand. It's like. Someone made that in like five minutes. Yeah, <laughs> it, was so, it was super cool. I, you know, and there was a lot of those moments that came to be, man. And um, you know, just having such a, a talented crew around and like, yeah, with willing people, you know, it just was so cool, so cool. 
So how did you meet those people? I'm sort of interested in your Finding jump. Yeah. And stuff. yeah it, was, it was hard in the beginning because I was kind of doing it anonymously. I was just doing it under the name Steve. Right. I had this production going and we had, you know, that was when we were doing Royal and Smear, all that stuff. We were doing that like just super on low. <clears throat> and um, so I had a, a bunch of contacts through Eddie Alcazar, who was a producer and he, he, uh, he knew a lot of the people, but we also just like put out straight up like crew calls in the paper, you know, and we paid a lot of people to just do like regular crew work. And but we also, you know, we had a couple of awesome PAs like Taylor and Mitch, mm-hmm. like those cats, man, they were like down from the beginning to the end, you know, PA and, you know, making pretty much nothing a day, and, but just super down for it. And uh, but yeah, it was each each sequence had its own crew so so uh we had uh we had to interchange a lot of things and a lot of people got moved around but it was in the end it was all good vibes man it was you know the best part of, of working on it was like you know people coming up to me and saying like wow i've been a gaffer for so many years i ain't never done nothing like that i'm having the time in my life you know like sweet that's that's great you know yeah you know? How did a uh, brain feeder, right? That's your uh, production company. Yeah. Um, when did that come into place? I had to make it because we didn't we didn't have insurance. Okay. We had to have a company for the insurance, so I had to make a fucking film company. <laughs> 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 so we had to like you know go through all the motions, and then here we are, brain feeder films. So. And um, <clears throat> stepping back a minute, back to like your decision uh, after. Uh, film school to yeah. go into music yeah um what sort of motivated that motivated that decision that, yeah well i was like already like kind of you know i kind of i had made a short film when i was in school and i had a good time with that i won an award off of that but i had uh i just felt kind of burnt out because i was just like man you need so many moving parts to make a film and, you know, I started experimenting with making music on a computer, and I'm doing it all myself. And I'm like, whoa, I could just do this alone? <laughs> Shit, this is way more appealing. You know, yeah. this is awesome. I can just, like, go into my own little zone and come out with some art at the end of it. This is, and I'm, I can do it? All right, yeah, I'm going to just do this for a while, yeah. you know? But I always knew I would go back and make a, a film at some point. I always knew at some point I would, you know, figure out how to com- connect the two together. And... uh I guess this is that the end result right here. How instrumental was like Adult Swim in that uh, sort of transition for you back? You know, making the bumpers and having also all your music is so cinematic. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. was that sort of you know it's were you part ever... of like the film love, man? I just love I, you know, I'm into it. Yeah, I've been into it. You know, see, I think a lot of people might think that this is just like some new, new, new for me, but it. And in, in a way it is, but like I've been trying to do this shit. Yeah. It's not like all of a sudden I had a bunch of money and was like, I'm going to make a movie. You know, yeah, it's not yeah. like that at all. Uh, but uh, I've, I've been waiting for it. I've been, I've been trying to get other little projects going, but like I said, it was just like I fucking just like doubted myself into the ground, man. And I'm just like, I got sick of it. I was like, you know what? I'm going to do this shit. I'm ready. It's, it's time now. I'm not gonna overthink. I'm just gonna jump fucking in yeah. and beat up the biggest kid in the room. <laughs> you know, like it was just like that kind of attitude, like punk rock approach, man. Like, I was like, fuck it, man. I'm, I'm going in. You gonna, you gonna know this movie right here. Yeah. You know, like yeah, yeah. all those kids, they gonna hear about this shit. Like that was my attitude. Was there like a moment of realization where you were like, okay, I have, to, I, I need to just say fuck it and make a movie now? Yeah, I had this moment. I had this moment of like uh, September 2015, like right around when I started growing my hair out, man. Yeah. This is the re- this hair is my movie basically. Interesting. Uh, I started. I, I saw this gif on my phone of me and Tom York DJing at this party, and it was like so funny. It was like a really funny long gif. It was super long. I thought to myself, man, I could make some animated gifts i could do some shit like that it'd be really silly i could learn after effects and i always wanted to do that so like yeah i'm gonna do this i'm actually gonna do this right now and uh yeah just it kind of blossomed from that you know i was like getting into after effects and making some complex shots and like 
doing lighting and cinematography and after effects and stuff. I'm like, man, let me just let me get some actors. Let's just do it for real. Let's just go in. Let's just do it. All right. All right. <laughs> this is it. This is it right now. You know? Yeah, man. It. it seems like you had the tool set in place. You know, you were ready to just go for it. Uh, yeah. It just, like I said, man, it was, I just spent a lot of time like overthinking things. Yeah. And talking myself out of ideas. Like, oh, well, it's cool, but it costs too much or. Uh, I don't have a producer, or oh, I don't want to do this all on my own. This, that, whatever. it was just there's always a reason to not do something. What do you think were the uh, your biggest fears going into this? I think my biggest fear was that I think anybody's biggest fear. You show up day one, and, like, and suddenly you forgot everything <laughs> that you wanted to do. <laughs> yeah. And everyone's looking at you like you're dumb as fuck. <laughs> and you, everyone hates you and you're like looking around and everyone's like whispering while they're looking at you. I think that's my worst fear in life generally. Yeah. But like that never happened. And, you know, we, I had a crew that was super supportive and they were super down. But I, I also never tried to make it feel like I knew exactly what I was doing either. Like I was I'm always open to hearing ideas from like. You know, whoever whoever the lighting dude is, the grip, I'll listen to whoever, like, help me. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, I yeah. don't give a fuck. Like, I'm not too proud to, like, you know, I want to figure it out and hear different opinions, ask a woman how she feels about this thing that we're talking about. You right. know, I'm, I'm, I'm all about it, man. I'm trying to, like, I, I'm, I'm, I wanted to make the best piece I could make out of what I had, mm-hmm. you know, so I, I definitely... Uh, didn't want to come off like a dictator or anything right. like that. You know? It's a weird balance to try and like discover, you know, because I've heard a lot of directors say, oh, you need to like have complete control. You need to really like show them that you know your vision or whatever. But you also totally need to be open to collaboration. Well, it's all, yeah, it all depends on, on who you're working with, right? It, it all depends. Like, if, I would never work with the cinematographer who wouldn't contribute ideas. Right. I don't want, I don't want that. I could definitely set up a shot. I don't, do I need a cinematographer at that point? I can just get camera assistance. I'm the cinematographer now. Yeah. But I want a person who's going to be like, well, what if we do it like this? That's my favorite moment, dude. I mean, obviously, not everybody should say it for everything or whatever, but like, I, I would love to try it like this other way if we can. If we have the time to do it, let's do it. Yeah. You know, see what happens. You know, I'm, I'm that guy, and I had to learn that, though. I didn't know that until I, I started doing the shit. You know, like I didn't know for sure, and like <clears throat> I wasn't comfortable. I like, even like smoking pot on set. You know, by the end of the shit, I was like, "Yeah, I'm getting high." All right, <laughs> we're gonna do it like this now, y'all. You are over here, and now you are over here. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, I know, I know, but we're doing it this way. I'm sorry, <laughs> you know, like it, it takes a while to get to that point. You know, and and feel confident doing it. But man, it, you know, it's. I think. Uh, once you put your crew together, you you see that these people, they're all collaborators, and these people are good at certain things. And you, you're you like, okay, well, if you're good at this, and you're good at that, and you guys meet, and you guys come up with this, and then, great, that's sorted. And it's it's just like, it's knowing that stuff and just, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun, man. Yeah, it was dude. a lot of fun. But goddamn, dude, I'm scarred for forever, <laughs> man. I'm scarred forever, dude. That shit was hard as yeah. fuck. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay, man, you've given us some great advice today i hope maybe Um, no really uh i i think i'm gonna end it with this question um i like to ask all of our uh interviewees sure and what was uh you know from everything that you learned what is the best piece of advice you could give to an aspiring filmmaker trying to make their first movie i can there's a few things cool um have a script supervisor (laughs) that is fucking good and that gives a shit. Yeah. Always be down to listen to ideas and consider yourself as like a collaborator and not a dictator. Um, and you'll always end up making something fun, you know, I think. Um, dude, there's so many things. This is tough, man. <laughs> I, wanna, I really want to help somebody right I know. now. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Um, I would also say, like, I'd hate to say it, but fuck, man, like, don't shoot on film. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Just give up on that. Just let it go. 
let it go. And until the day someone pays you to shoot on film, just shoot that shit on digital. No one cares. Word. No one cares about the formats. Like it's, you know, they're like, oh, what? Wow, I really like the way it was shot. That goes so far. Like just shoot the fucking movie. However you have to shoot it on your fucking phone, just shoot that shit. Like the cameras don't matter. Don't get don't get into that shit. Don't get into buying cameras. Just fucking rent the camera for your shoot and do that. Don't be trying to like buy a whole bunch of lenses. Just rent that shit. Don't spend all that money on that. Put it into your your the rest of the productions. And um, don't work with animals. That's a real thing. Don't do it. Just just don't do it. <laughs> it <laughs> I, like I could a, go on forever, yeah. <laughs> man. I go on forever. Make sure you have your visual effects. Uh, producer or a post-production super uh, producer yeah you need a producer for post-production if you're making a feature mm-hmm. don't try to like think that you know your producer is going to be able to get you through that shit or you're going to be able to get through it on your own it's a totally different thing after you shoot your movie that's a real thing consider to save some of your budget for that yeah. <laughs> oh dude all day i'll keep going all day but i'm not but yeah. but thank you all right thank you. Yeah. thanks a lot sweet man. Thanks for listening. If you liked what you heard, you can tune in every Monday to hear an interview podcast on the No Film School podcast. So just subscribe. And while you're at it, go ahead and give us five stars on iTunes. We're on whatever your go-to podcast platform is. I'm John Fusco. Stay tuned this Thursday for Indie Film Weekly. You can follow me at Jim underscore John underscore Jim on Twitter. And you can follow No Film School at No Film School. See you Thursday.